Four and a half days, man. Yeah. Four and a half days until the phone booth becomes a voting booth. <laughs> no, no, hey, don't worry about security. Nobody's going to vandalize this office. Uh, this place looks like it was built by vandals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry about it. Oh, you never know what you're going to wake up to, huh? Hey, welcome to, uh, what are we now? Season 2, episode 37. Uh, and I was uh, just saying we're about four and a half days away from uh, federal election. I don't know if anybody really wanted it. There's that big debate going on, but a uh, whole lot of flora and fauna around that. What I do want to tell you about today, though, is that as per usual, this Niagara 411 live program with Lee Sterry, that would be me, is fueled by Gales Gas Bars. It is powered by WeStream. It is generously supported by Performance Heating and Air, Enwick, Niagara's high-speed internet provider, as well as the always Niagara-focused Verge Insurance Group. We are hosted, as always, at uh, the Fiddler's Poor House here on St. Paul Street in downtown St. Catharines. We have uh, some pretty cool people to introduce you to today or reintroduce you to today. So come on in, let's get settled, and uh, we'll get this episode 37 of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry underway on a really pleasant, pleasant sum summer day here for September the 15th. A uh, bit of a special day, yeah, it's a Wednesday, but um, still high quality. <laughs> come on in, we'll see you a bit. And uh, welcome in, as I said, to Season 2, Episode 37. Man, the weeks go by in a hurry. Now, we're doing this on a Wednesday this week because, uh, well, people have other things going on in their business lives and their live lives, etc., etc. And I, I want to do this right off the top, first of all, because um, it's kind of cool that our, our, our partner, Kevin Jack, along with his partner, Brandon Scram, of uh, WeStream Niagara have a brand new contract which uh, is is really cool for them and that's adding uh, the St. Catharines City Council meetings to their streaming schedule and and that is really cool and that's happening tomorrow night uh, so we wanted to give uh, WeStream a lot of time to get it set up and make sure everything is uh, cool and ready to go so we moved this to Wednesday for now just to uh, just to accommodate other people's lives. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. And this, of course, on the uh, extreme right side of your screen is Kevin Jack. Kevin, always a uh, pleasure to see you. Hey, Lee. Happy to have you here. You were at Niagara Falls City Council last night till oh, the wee gosh, small hours of the morning. Doozy, almost eight hours last night in the Man. city of Niagara Falls. And uh, for clarification, Monday we actually debuted with the uh, city of St. Catharines. And yeah. here, I'll throw it up there. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow night, WeStream is involved with the uh, Lincoln Chamber of Commerce, and they got their business oh, that's achievement. That's what I, I apologize. Yeah, no, 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 it's all good. It's all I, good. Might, I had my dates uh, mixed. As long as you don't get the dates mixed up, that's good. No, I'm. <laughs> so here we go. There's a little snippet from uh, St. Catherine's Monday yeah. night. If you're watching Council, you would have noticed that there's a little more of a professional polish to it. So if you've got help with uh, any of your virtual needs, whether it's business achievement awards, Friday we'll be at uh, Welland City Hall doing kind of a, a music event. Um, we're just all over the place. So now we'll take this opportunity, as you see uh, St. Catharines Mayor Walter Sinzik there in the center of your screen, we'll take this opportunity to actually slide into some photos that were taken and popped up. Actually, they popped up first on Niagara 411, as far as I am aware. This is the first time anybody has had a chance to see these. And believe me, they are disturbing. So this is not necessarily uh, public content for everyone, especially little ones. But that is the front of Mayor Walter Senzik's house 
in St. Catharines. I don't have to read it for you, you can pretty much read it yourself. That's one picture. And then on the other side of the door is uh, similar language, but they've thrown NDP in there. So whoever see, whoever's doing these things, as it seems to be the same people, because they use the same syntax, the same uh, grammatical flair, uh, as when uh, Chris Bittles, the liberal candidate for the federal election of St. Catharines, when Chris Biddle's cars were vandalized with similar language. So whoever this is, is connecting the liberals with NDP with communism. I, I know, I'm as confused as you are. That, there's, uh, that's Mr. Biddle's car. Or is that, or is that, uh, or was that uh, Mayor Sensex? No, that's uh, that's Biddle's car. But apparently, yeah, I it was yeah that, uh, they hit they hit the mayor's car as yeah. well, which seems a little far-reaching, don't you think? I mean, it's it's never right for anybody. But what role does the mayor of St. Catharines play in a federal election? I'm These are some of the things that have always bothered me with municipal and regional politics: is the fact that people are often tarred with a party brush, and I'm not naive enough to think that local politicians do not have some sort of uh, empathy or ties with political parties. However, they are not voted in by their party association. A municipal politician uh, is not supported by any particular party when it comes to an election, in theory. Uh, nor is a Niagara regional councillor or any regional councillor in any region in Ontario or across the country. It's only provincial and federal politics where we start getting into party affiliations and, and partisan behavior, etc. So there is some sort of grassroots, knucklehead organization behind this stuff. And uh, I mean, I, I know Mayor Senzik. We've talked numerous times. We've banged into each other at uh, various events around Niagara. Um, we're not special friends, nor are we special enemies. We're just professional acquaintances. And uh, whether we are or whether we aren't, that shouldn't happen to anybody's house, under any circumstances, for any reason. And it's. Uh, it's being condemned by everybody, uh, well not everybody, but most, most people whose names you might know, including the, uh, the politicians that are running for office and who will find out whether they're in office or not come Monday. But anyway, it just, it's, it's very, very unfortunate that this kind of mentality has spread its way into grassroots community politics in Canada anywhere in Canada, but especially here in Niagara. Now, one of the things that I experienced today, and this is just what I saw, I have no, I have no knowledge as to whether anything was going on or not. But when I drove into here uh, at the set at Fiddler's Poor House to do the show today, I drove by, as I usually do, Chris Biddle's constituency office at the corner of Queen and uh, Geneva Street, here in St. Catharines, and there was a police officer, a, a single police officer, standing outside the office of Chris Biddle, and he was holding, I couldn't see the front of it, I could only see the back of it, it looked like some sort of a, a wooden a picture or uh, some sort of frame, maybe it, was a, maybe it was a poster of some sort, I don't know what it said on the front. Uh, the the building itself, the office itself, looked like it was not inhabited, and I was wondering to myself if there had been some sort of vandalism occur there. Now, again, that's just a, uh, that's just a question on my part. I'm not saying that anything was was vandalized or there was anything going on, but there had to be something that uh, that required a Niagara Regional Police Service officer to be on that site. Let's see, is this, is this where his office is right here, Lee, as I scroll around? Right uh, there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right there. 
So right where there. so where was the officer? The on, officer on the was grass? standing. You see the front door where the where the blue where the blue sign is, where the blue dot is on the front door? Yes. He was if, as you're looking at this screen, he was to the right of that, uh, right by the window, looking toward the building and and, and holding some it looked like he was reading a, a, a sign that was maybe three feet by three feet square but i don't know what the sign said and then of course i was moving so i i you, lost the you don't know what it said no long-haired freaky people need not need apply, not apply. <laughs> come on Lee, everybody knows that uh yes the five-man electrical band in circa 1972 ah the memories <laughs> okay um yeah, so we have a lot of this stuff going on. We're four and a half days away. I think we're probably going to see more of it, unfortunately. But and whether it's whether it's against uh, Trudeau or uh, or O'Toole or any of them, it there's no there's no place for it. But apparently there are those that think differently, and here we are today. Kevin, we have an update on one of the most fascinating ladies that we have interviewed on this program. Her name is Jasmine Jessa Devisius, uh, and uh, the way her name is spelt, you'd, you'd, you'd almost think it was uh, Jasmine Devicious because of the line of work that she is in. Uh, the line of work that she is in is a mixed martial arts competitor. And she was a fascinating interview. You'll see that you see that interview right at the uh, at the center of your screen that we did with her way back. And uh, she made her mark, I guess you would say. This was last night, correct, Kevin? It said UFC debut September fourteenth. Yeah. So last night she so debuted this is just last on night. the uh, the Dana White Contender Series. Yeah. Now Dana White is the Grand Poobah of the UFC. Nothing happens without his blessing, without his anointing. You don't get a contract, you don't fight in the UFC unless he gives the green light and he, only he, he gives you a contract. Well, when we were talking with Jasmine, and Jasmine's uh, from, well, uh, from St. Catharines, by the way. And when we were talking with Jasmine before. Her goal was to compete in this series and get a contract from Dana White to compete in the big stage, and that's the UFC. That's that's the show of mixed martial arts. Well, last night, she competed, and there was no guarantee, even if she won the fight, there was no guarantee that she ought to, it wasn't like, if you win, you get in. He still, he still is the king. He has to, you know, give you his blessing before you get in. But, A, she did win the fight, and B, it was good news for her. So here she is, uh, you'll see Dana White there on the left, and uh, Jasmine is on your right. And it's the Dana White Contender Series. She was a contender, and man, she just uh, came out of it great. She did an interview after the, after the fight. Yeah, here, well, here the, uh, here's Dana White with the announcement. Okay. Obviously, Jasmine has a, a, a big wrestling background, and what you see with a lot of wrestlers is they'll get that top position and start smashing people. They like to dish it out, but when a fight starts to turn, they don't take it as well as they dished it out. She can dish it out and she can take it. Um, you know, the, the, the fight turned into an absolute war. And uh, I like what I saw. We're going to give her a shot. Congratulations, Jasmine Jessavidius. That's great. All right. Woo! So this next fight, I mean. Whether, whether you like, whether you approve of, of people just smashing the hell out of each other or not, you got to be happy for somebody that's happy that reaches one of their all-time goals. And I mean, St. Catherine's born and bred. She yeah. couldn't be any more St. Catherine. She uh, she trains right here at the Niagara MMA Club. Just such a great gal too, and okay. she looks like she's beat up. And she explained. Are we going to play the interview? Yeah, yeah, we'll play parts of this. Okay. Uh, the emotions right now. I imagine it's still probably settling in a little bit, but the UFC contract is is secured. So what's what's the feeling right now? It's crazy. I uh, I can't believe it. Like I'm uh, got a bit of a loss for words right now. I I'm just so happy. I I I can't believe it. Honestly, I put in so much work. You know, it's like the the hard days, those hard grinding days. Every day, day and day out, day and day out, and uh, kind of to see it all come together and like 
be here. It's just, it, it feels so good. It's awesome. And obviously, it wasn't an easy fight, right? Especially the second round. She had a, a lot of effective strikes in the second round. So what was your feeling as, as the fight was kind of playing out? Did it, yeah, did so it surprise talking a little bit about the fight. That's, you know, for MMA I had people. I just had butterflies yeah, but, in my if stomach. I'm like thinking about it. Please, 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 and if please. If you're and, thinking uh, she's came looking through. beat up, she is Daddy looking beat Dana up. Came well, through for as me. you would expect. That's awesome. But she and explains Dana that, that you too. You told him you'll be here for the next two weeks. So if you Later. if there's a fight that comes up. So I wonder yeah. how much of that yeah, is, you know, hey, she goes. be big and bold and make some statements. Or how much of you is really like, I hope I can debut on Saturday. No, 100%. I mean, my weight's good. This will heal up super fast. Literally after spot, my face marks up so easy. My whole body marks up so easy. <laughs> Literally a gust of wind and I get a bruise. It's it's ridiculous. All my fights, you look at my face after, I look trash. But um, <laughs> but no, 100%. You know, I, I want to fight right away. I, I'm ready. I, I'm good. I, uh, I know, uh, obviously, I always have things to work on. And I want to be better going into every fight I want to be better than my last fight but um I what like why not we're here for a reason let's fight let's fight let's fight I want to I'm older I want to get as many fights as I can in and like reach the pinnacle of this sport and last thing for me I guess you kind of touched on there but um I you know what can we expect out of you in your USC run I mean is this going to be the hallmark that you're basically trying to fight as frequently as possible and just in, in any matchup you can take yeah, I mean, within the the weight class, I'm not I'm not gonna move up to 35, 45, anything like that. But um, maybe 115. We'll see. But uh, you couldn't beat the smile off her face. That, that she just you can tell well, she's the, just the other woman tried. Yeah, the other woman tried, <laughs> but uh, she is just absolutely so so uh, uh, well jazzed. Jazz is uh, is jazzed, and we're so happy for, her and we're so pleased. Yeah, absolutely. Applause, applause. Uh, we're so happy that we were able to bring you her dream before this played out, and then be able to follow it up like this. Because she was, you could tell she was so wound up and, and waiting to get going onto this this series that uh, that she could she could hardly contain herself when we talked to her the first time. And uh, yeah, we got a pet bee around here again. Um, Anyway, Jasmine J uh, Jessica Davisius, uh, congratulations, Jazz. Uh, just absolutely thrilled for you. And I don't know how your parents watch that. Because if, I, if, if it was my daughter or my granddaughter or whatever that's doing that, and they're just pounding the living daylights out of each other. And I know it's a younger generation thing, uh, but... Uh, Wow, you've got to you, you got to be strong to watch one of your loved ones compete at that level <laughs> in that sport. Hey, as long as she's winning, right? Yeah. But man, and we're gonna catch up to her absolutely. I mean, it's the day after the fight, so yeah. we didn't want to drag her out of bed. But uh, probably by next week's show, we'll get Jasmine back on here for the first-hand account, and of course, repping St. Catharines and Niagara all the way. And she she all. She, she made reference there, of course, to her face. She doesn't seem to care about, uh, she, ah, I, I look bad, but uh, I mean, a, a gust of wind can bruise me. I'm not worried about that. Like, she doesn't, she's fine. And, you know, a lot of women are pretty concerned with how their faces look at the end of the day. She obviously is not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and naturally gorgeous. I don't think she needs to worry that much. No, no. Well, anyway, congratulations, Jess. Uh, thanks for being a part of Niagara 411 Live before and now. And uh, obviously, we'll look to the, the future as things evolve. Uh, hopefully, that contract uh, becomes everything you, uh, you dreamt it would become. Now, we have... Again, we had uh, the, the CEO of the Niagara Parks Commission on uh, talking about this new attraction, which is the Niagara Power Station. And this is phase two that we're going to show you right now. Phase one was opening the Niagara Power Station to tourists. This is phase two where they put the light presentation in place. And this is just a spectacular small clip of what you can see now in the evenings at the Niagara Power Station along the parkway by the rapids. It's I think it's called the Currents, Niagara's Power Transformed. Okay, there you go. yeah, there it is. Way to go, Kevin. NiagaraParks.com, Current. Show you again, that went by rather quick. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, have a look at this again. 
seems like that they hired like a, a design multimedia company out of Montreal. Out of Montreal, yes. And they say when you step inside, you sort of bring the power station alive. It it, uh, it perhaps is motion activated, and you're right there in the middle of the of the river, of the falls, of the uh, the, the power generation, the whole deal. That is so cool. I am so so thrilled that the foresight was there to make something out of that structure instead of just ripping it down and putting up another high-rise hotel or something. Just absolutely spectacular. Um, we can condemn uh, cities and provinces and commissions, etc., for many things and many bad decisions, but not for that one. That was a hell of a decision. Sorry, the uh, pushing me along rather yeah, quick. Yeah, you're here. moving we got, me along uh, here. Yes, we got we, Jessica Wilson to get to live from the Toronto International. Oh my gosh, Film time Festival. is flying. Yeah, that's just a few minutes away. But uh, this is something that we wanted to touch on for a couple of weeks. We wanted, yeah, we've been trying to get this. These are the guys that figured out how to get to the roof of the casino in Niagara Falls. The casino climbers. Now they were fine, were they not, Kevin? They were. I'm not sure how it wrapped up, whether they identified the individuals, but I mean... One of these times I'd like to talk with one of them, though, so, so that... It's one of these weird things where you don't want to promote it at the same time. You're My, fascinated by I, it. Absolutely. We know exactly where this is. Yeah. And, I mean, and how did they get up there? There is, there is security all over those buildings. I mean, it's now, a casino. It's a... It's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Ocean's 28 or something like that. Ocean's 11. George Clooney should be there. Ladder. Then it gets real like daredevil -y. Like right now, standing on that rooftop, yeah. I'm not really sure. fearing for their safety. But, um, but here, when they go out by the actual letters. And nobody is around to stop them going anywhere they want to go. Like this year is, boy oh boy, that's heart attack inducing for me. Just to watch it. Look at, oh, oh, yeah, we gotta be able to get back down. Don't wanna be locked up here. Who hasn't done that before, huh? Yeah. And then of course, the, the beautiful look of the uh, the uh, upper rapids and the, and the falls themselves. Oh my gosh, what's he doing? Yeah, I what mean, is he this, doing now? Exactly. What is he? He's on one of the letters, is yeah. he not? There he is. He's sitting on one of the letters that says casino. Oh my, God. it's in the sea, he's sitting in the sea. I don't mean S-E-A, I mean in the sea. Oh, it'd be still my heart. Now, oh, now this is just a video of them doing similar things in Toronto. Oh, okay, that's not here yet. I want to talk to one of those guys, Kevin, at some point. I don't care how long it takes. I want to talk to one of those guys. It's absolutely crazy. I, I've been up there. I scaled down the wall of one of, the, one of the hotels. I don't know if it's as high as the casino, but to begin, we had to go up to the rooftop. It was a charity event about maybe seven years ago. I was going to say, ago. why did you do this? So I rappelled down the side of, I want to say it was the Marriott. It was high. We're talking 25 the Marriott's stories high. Yeah, it's right. It's right down there on Falls View Avenue. And uh, and we had to, of course, go to the rooftop for that. And I'll tell you, uh, the view from up there, like you wanted to just say, no, no, I'll let the next person go. I'm exactly. soaking this in. And uh, it was it was an incredible view. But then uh, as soon as my tush went over the side, <laughs> boy, wow. oh boy, I needed a diaper that day. That was uh, whew, crazy. All right, to go to uh, the person that we were running through this for is uh, Jessica Wilson. She has also been on the program before. She is from Welland. She is a, a singer, songwriter, entertainer. But today, she is in a whole different role. Hi, Jessica. How are you doing? I am good. How are you? I am well. Thank you for joining us. And you are uh, spending time at TIFF this week, the Toronto International Film Festival, right? I am, yeah. Started last Thursday and things are kind of winding down for me now, but it does run all the way until um, this Saturday. So I live in Toronto now, so it's really convenient for me to be able to go see movies and 
and see some really cool people. Um, and it's my favorite time of the year. I didn't get it last year because of COVID. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to be back. So what have you, what, how have you been covering this? So I'm actually um, working social media and film reviews for AIA Canada Image Agency. Um, and they cover all of the red carpets and all of the press events. And I've been lucky enough to um, assist them with that and I've tried to see as many movies as I can and I've been very very lucky uh, with the experience that I've been given and you said you're winding down what have you got left to do before the fat lady sings as they say uh, so uh, tonight I am seeing um, the movie Spencer starring Kristen Stewart it's about um, Lady Diana obviously yeah um, and then I have one more movie uh, tomorrow night called The Good House starring Sigourney Weaver and I'm very excited for that. Um, and then there are some movies on the digital platform that I'm able to access from the comfort of my home, which is very nice after spending five days um, in, in crowds of fully vaccinated human yeah. beings, but it's a social exposure after a year of nothing. <laughs> All right, so what has been your standout experience so far? Um, standout experience film wise would probably be uh, I saw the movie Last Night in Soho by Edgar Wright. He did Baby Driver, um, starring uh, Anya Taylor Joy and Thomas and McKenzie. It's an absolutely exceptional film. Um, so that was a standout because I got to see it before anybody else, which was really neat. And then um, also meeting Jessica Chastain a couple nights ago when she was at the premiere for her movie The Forgiven. Um, she's also here for The Eyes of Tammy Faye, which was also an amazing movie. It's out in theaters this Friday, and everybody should go watch it if they can. And your, the, the notable notables that, uh, that you have met, what is it like to be rubbing shoulders with the, the, the titans of an industry like the film business? <laughs> I mean, it's really awesome, especially for somebody like me who is an actor, to kind of pick their brains and to kind of talk to them about it. At the end of the day, they're just human beings, right? But it is a little hard to not get starstruck when you see somebody like Jessica Chastain um, right in front of you and you admire her work so much. Um, so, I mean, I like to think I, I keep it calm, cool, and collected, and I try to keep it professional because you never know if you're going to to be working with these people one day. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's definitely no super starstruck moments this year, but in past years, there's definitely been some celebrities where I've been like, oh my God, the, I can't believe that. <laughs> yeah, so do, do, uh, I'm pretty sure that because of travel situations and COVID and all this other thing, that probably uh, a number of people that would have normally attended premieres of their movies and things of that nature stayed away. Uh, that's probably still happening right yes absolutely and there's a really strong um, COVID protocol for all the films like masks have to remain on you have to be fully vaccinated or show proof of a negative COVID test within like 24 hours right. um, all of the accredited media we have to be tested for COVID it's very very safe um, and anytime I meet somebody I keep a mask on unless it's established that we're both fully vaccinated right. so um, it is somewhat normal um, but but still COVID is, is, is very much existent and that comes first and we have to take care of you know safety and how, how, how did you man how managed uh, did you manage to land this plum role is this an agency that represents yourself or like or did you apply for this position how did that happen no 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 so um it's actually uh my uncle's photography agency he started working at tiff many many years ago um and then i would kind of tag along but i was never really old enough to um, kind of like attend the big parties or know how to work a really expensive camera or anything like that and over the years <laughs> yeah. uh, I've kind of just been taught uh, how to do it and and this year because of COVID because I am in the city and it's convenient for me to be here um, I'm a little bit you know younger so I know a lot of like the younger stars and the up and coming um, and I'm fully vaccinated and protected so him and I went together and um, it just it kind of all fell into place. Now, where can we see your work? You, you take a lot of photographs and, and things of that nature. Where, where can we see what, you, what you've done during TIP? So anything that was taken at the festival by either me or my uncle, Frank R. Curry, can be seen at AIA um, Image Agency, AIA Canada Net. I believe there's a link somewhere in the bio or something. Yeah, It'll we'll be put linked it up. All yeah, yeah, perfect. So just click the link. Everything is on the site. Um, everything is watermarked, of course, if, if 
um, anybody decides to see this and wants to purchase any, um, you're more than welcome to. But but our entire TIFF journey, including um, the private party with Joshua Jackson, is all on that site. So That's you terrific. can see our journey. On that. Mm -hmm. So what's next? What, what's next for Jessica Wilson? What's uh, what's on your upcoming calendar? That's a great question. Thank <laughs> it's you. hard to say. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to say with COVID. Um, I would hope that I will be able to do some some theater and some film in the coming months. Um, I don't want to say anything just in case COVID does uh, happen. That that nasty Delta fourth wave comes and yeah. it gets taken out from underneath me like it has three times before. So I don't want to reveal too much. But when I'm able to say um, I am still working, I am still singing and gigging and I'm hoping that things come together for early fall, early winter and even into 2022. I think it's just really important that everybody does their job um, to keep each other safe, whether that's wearing a mask or sanitizing or if you choose to get vaccinated. Um, whatever you decide to do as a person, I think it's important that the whole world does its part so people like me can go back to work because I would I love agree. to go back to work. I agree. It's, <laughs> a, it's been a long haul for entertainers uh, and people that rely on public spaces. Uh, Jessica Wilson, thanks again for joining us. Please stay a friend of this program and keep us in touch with next steps, etc. Thank you for the great work that you've done at TIFF. And uh, it's, just, it's just always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Enjoy your day. Yeah, you too. Bye, Jess. Bye. Lovely young lady. Um, so much, you know, it always strikes me, Kevin, there are so many talented, resourced people uh, in our land and in our backyard and so many of them are working so hard to to make a living at it because it ain't, it, it ain't easy. Uh, it's, it's one thing to have a passion or to have a hobby but when you try to turn that into a, a, a living that's a whole different sack of hammers. <laughs> yeah, you know? And, and, and people like Jessica work so hard at it. And uh, yeah, she's had a couple of legs up and contacts in the industry and that kind of thing. But you've still got you, you've still got to make the grade. You've still got to do the work. And, and, and I uh, wish all people well. So many talented people, I guess is where I was going with this, don't realize their dreams. And they stay talented. They're not any less talented. The difference between somebody being a superstar and somebody with the same amount of talent um, just being a hobbyist is maybe one lucky break and and you don't know when or if that is ever going to come so you know to people like Jessica God bless you good luck and I'll, and I'll just add I mean just as a uh, Jasmine is representing Niagara so well in the UFC octagon yeah. uh, Jessica Wilson is representing Niagara through and through and the person that you see on the screen is the same person that you see off in my dealings with her, she has been an absolute pleasure, Just delight, adult. and very professional. So if people are looking for somebody to uh, to work with or collaborate with, or if you're looking for an artist, sometimes, you know, they could be the best singer in the world, but if off stage, they're a real gripe to get along with. Uh, oh, for and sure. And Jessica's the exact opposite of that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so never fear. That's great. Uh, coming up at uh, 1245 today or thereabouts, is uh, Mike Strange. He's a Niagara Falls City Councilor, but he's not here in that role. He is here in the role of um, how many how many years in a row is this now, Kevin? You said it's quite. It's a, it's a, the tenth, but last tenth? year was kind of nine point five. So it's oh, the eleventh yeah. year, but it's the tenth. They wanted to have, a, of course, a big bang for the tenth, but COVID stripped them of that opportunity last year. Of an event called Heaters Heroes, uh, and it's happening this Saturday at Oaks Park in Niagara Falls, and uh, Mike Strange is going to be here about 12.45 to tell us all about that, and uh, there's, a, there's the poster for it there. Coming up at 1 o'clock today, we are expecting to be able to speak with Marla Smith from the Niagara Children's Center here in Niagara, and while we're talking about that, the Smile Cookie Campaign is underway to support the Niagara Children's Center here in St. Catharines as well, or in uh, Niagara Children's Center is in St. Catharines, but it, it serves the entire region. Uh, the bricks and mortar location in St. Catharines, the entire region uh, and their fam and its families benefit from, from this facility and all the Tim Hortons have their Smile Cookie campaign. So buy a Smile Cookie and uh, all the proceeds go toward the Niagara Children's Center. We'll talk with Marla hopefully at one o'clock today.
All right. You want to uh, run through our sponsors here, Lee? Seems I like a do. Good time. I, I do. Um, how do you do that, Kevin? How do you just read my mind? Because we're in ex- sync. That's exactly where I was going uh, after this. Uh, we want to uh, acknowledge our sponsors. Of course, our our title sponsor, our main uh, supporting sponsor, fueled by Gales Gas Bars, is this Niagara Four One One Live uh, program. And uh, Jessica Friesen, the CEO, was actually on last week to talk about her book, This Will Not Break Me. And uh, we'll repost that at some point in time, Kevin, uh, if uh, people want to see that little interview. But you can also look at it in the archives of uh, Niagara 411 Live. So uh, just an absolute, absolute uh, honor to be supported by Gales Gas Bars Limited as our title sponsor. Performance Heating and Air, Carlo uh, and his gang. Again, all of these all of these companies are locally owned, operated, founded, uh, and grounded here. And uh, Carlo and his, his gang, their their goal is to save Niagara families money because they have Niagara families here themselves, and they know uh, what it's like to be you. And, and to uh, uh, to that end, Lee, oh, yeah. I, I bumped into Carlo uh, just two days ago. He's at the Canadian Tire. Yeah, I mean that's what you talk about, right? I mean they've local got families people, here, local, local things, people supporting other local businesses. And didn't didn't uh, you know he was at the cash? I was walking in and just say, "Hey, Carlo!" <laughs> no, hey, KJ. <laughs> that's good. And that was that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and you you can tell when sponsors are happy because they're not complaining. I'd like we hear so little from our sponsors, and I do want them to know that we appreciate them very very much. And you're allowed to contact us at any time by the way, but uh, I guess no news is good news, and uh, such is the same with NWIC High Speed Internet. Um, Scott and his, uh, his crew over there, it's, it's such a different concept for people that supply internet access and, uh, uh, and all, that, all that technical stuff. There's no, no signed contracts that you have to worry about. Uh, it's a high quality rural as well as urban internet service, and again, it's a Niagara solution to any local issues that you have. Also, uh, Verge Insurance Group, uh, Mark uh, Shirk and his, uh, his gang at Verge Insurance. You may see them with the odd video, the odd uh, post online on uh, Niagara 411, et cetera, or elsewhere. So uh, any of your insurance needs, be it uh, house or car or whatever, uh, get in touch with Verge and they can also bring in Niagara solutions to any issues that you may have or answer any questions that you would uh, would have for an insurance company based on your individual needs. So, Performance Heating and Air, Anoic, Verge Insurance, and of course our title sponsor, Gales Gas Bars. Thank you so much. Always so. We, we feel blessed to have uh, such great people continuously on our side here at Niagara 411 Live. I do also want to mention uh, Naya, the Fiddler's Poor House. Uh, their staff uh, are always uh, a little bit inconvenienced by us <laughs> every week by sort of schlepping into their space and setting up our gear and putting our set together and they're always gracious and uh, Dave McParian of uh, Fiddler's Poor House, also owner and operator of Monty's in St. Catharines. Thanks for letting us, us be here. And uh, it would be remiss of me if I did not mention Le Beau Chapeau in uh, Niagara on the Lake. Um, Kevin, not this Kevin, that Kevin, Kevin Newfeld at uh, Beau Chapeau Hat Shop on Queen Street, right in the main drag in Niagara on the Lake, uh, has uh, partnered with us to um, provide me with uh, these beautiful um, chapeaux. And uh, man, they are great. Uh, any, anywhere up to like 10,000 hats at any one time for males as well as females. Sports as well as, there's some beautiful shots. Uh, sports as well as formal, uh, casual, all season, you name it. And uh, there is a hat for it at uh, Beau Chapeau Hat Shop in downtown in Niagara on the Lake. What does it say on this one? This one is. Uh, this is uh, made by uh, Scala. It's a it's a company that has been uh, making hats since 1921. Now it's quality stuff, though. It is. I mean, uh, 1921. You got a company making hats for a hundred years. They're celebrating their centennial of doing nothing but making 100 hats. A hundred years of. They're pretty make, damn good at it. 
Making hats, yeah. This this is my uh, higher end straw variety. Uh, not good in uh, in rain, but I have other hats to show you going forward. That uh, they've got something for everybody, really. And uh, they will always let you know how to look after them, and the and the clientele is knowledgeable about what they're selling, and it's just amazing. And coming up, I can't wait to do this. And this is probably when we might have um, have Kevin on for the very first time when they opened this feature at Beau Chapeau. Uh, Beau Chapeau. They, um, they bought a lot of equipment, as I understand it, uh, Kevin, from uh, a hat maker, uh, seller, retailer, etc., cetera, in, in Hamilton that was going out of business or, or shut their doors or whatever it is. So with that, Beau Chapeau in Niagara-on-the-Lake is opening an entire section of hat restoration and repair which they didn't do on site before, but will now, and it's, it's under construction now, as I, as I understand it. When I was in there, they had a, a spot uh, sort of uh, cordoned off that they were working on to, to install this stuff. Yeah, if you haven't been in a while, they expanded into the space adjacent to them. Yes. So now the store is twice as big, and I think yeah. most of the restoration is going to happen in, in the new space. Yeah. But that's what it is. It's not repair, it's restoration. And I think this will position them as probably the only capable company in maybe in North America, at least like Eastern Seaboard. Well, yeah, in Canada for sure, because it's a it's a lost art that was very prevalent many, many years ago, but not so much anymore. We live in a disposable so society, hats being being among them, but uh, not not so much anymore. And uh, it's really cool when you go in there because if you want the hat, the exact Indiana Jones style hat that Harrison Ford wore in those movies, that hat's there. Any, any famous hat you can think of, that style, uh, if you like it and it suits you. Blues Brothers? I can get a Blues Brothers you hat You can get there? a Blues Brothers hat, yeah. Yes. It's there. I'm on a mission from God to get to Beau Chapeau <laughs> in Niagara on the uh, Anyway, um, uh, and uh, so thanks for the people in there for being so nice to me too. And uh, we should note, Lee, that uh, Knock on the Lake played a bit of a role in uh, September 11th. And uh, I know that they had a, uh, a bit of a, yeah. a, a Memorial Day uh, last week, so just kind of wanted to recognize that. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was um, mixed emotion day for just about all people, the 20-year anniversary of 9-11. Of and I know a couple of people, Kevin, that actually have birthdays on that day. And they have a really tough, you wouldn't expect it, but a lot of them have kind of a tough time dealing with that when their birthday is the day that will live in infamy, as, uh, as they say, for all time, as far as terrorist acts are concerned. And uh, so, they, they have kind of a special feeling about it. It's interesting that you should mention that. We were having this debate a couple of weeks ago. Backyard barbecue or what have mm -hmm. you as to what date on the calendar is actually the worst birthday. And September 11th came up, yeah. Halloween came up, and it all stemmed from uh, one of my buddy's wives, or I guess she's my buddy too. Her birthday is on January the 2nd. That's what my says, that was my mother's birthday. She says that's the worst because nobody wants to do anything on January the 2nd. They're all holidayed out. They just, you know, uh, blew their brains out on uh, New Year's You're Eve. You're probably still hung over. Right, so... But we threw in uh, September 11th, yeah. and um, Mayor Niagara Falls, Jim Diodati, put out a post on his Facebook page saying that on September 11th, 2001, um, they gave birth to their daughter. So their daughter's born September 11th, 2001. Wow. So there he is in the hospital, and the, world's, the world as we know it is changing. So, But what do, you, what do you think, Lee? What would be, is Halloween the worst? December 25th? December 26th? These all I think, came up. I think, I think Christmas has got to really be... As, as far as somebody acknowledging you is concerned, I think Christmas has got to be the worst. Um, we made a, because of my mother's birthday, being on January the 2nd, we as a family always made a, because we knew that when she was younger, it probably sort of got lost in the shuffle. We made an absolute uh, point of celebrating her birthday as separate and beyond anything else like we made sure that she was recognized it was just 
because we knew that it was a tough time uh, of year to do it. But I think Christmas has got to be got to be the worst. But wouldn't wouldn't January first be worse than January second? Well, maybe. Although you might have the recognition of being you know the first born of the year or something like that, right? But if then again, were... how about December thirty first? You're going to have a celebration. That came up as well. Like everybody's what? celebrating, but not really for you. And you're also then, you're the youngest person, right? In your grade, in your class. Right. December 31st, you're right at the end. Yeah. What about uh, Halloween? Would that be good or bad? Uh, February 14th. As a kid, it would be bad. February 14th as a woman in a relationship? February 14th, yeah, Valentine's Day. Um, I had a, I had a, a next-door neighbor really, really close to us. You know those neighbors when you're growing up as a kid, they're friends of your parents, but uh, you're not related, but they're so close to you, you call them uncle and aunt, you know, because you don't call them by the first name, but you don't call them Mr. or Mrs., so you go somewhere in between, so that you're kind of fake aunt and uncle. Uh, I had one of those, and uh, her birthday was on February 14th. She kind of got lost in the shuffle quite a bit, I think. Um, yeah, that's a great, that's a great debate to have. But those, those kind of conflicts are, are very, very different than a 9-11 type thing. Because now you're, being, you're, you're connected to something absolutely horrific instead of something that's just another kind of celebration. You can deal with that other stuff on a whole different level. But when it's your birthday on something like 9-11, I think it's... I think it's something different. It has a different, different dimension to it. You almost feel guilty for having a birthday. You almost feel guilty for wanting to celebrate something. Because you, nobody should be celebrating anything on that day. You know what I'm saying? It's like, gee, it's my birthday. I want to be happy, but is it okay to be happy? I don't know. That's what, um, you know what, I'm actually happy with each passing year that we can get back to a little bit of normalcy or whatever that is these days that September 11th because for so many years 2002 2003 2004 2005 yeah. like you were saying I mean you almost felt bad for having a smile on your face it was such a somber mm -hmm. event and somber anniversary yeah. and changed the way that we live our day-to-day -day lives um, that, I, that I was happy to see that on the 20th anniversary that we're we're holding memorials but maybe not shedding as many tears. I actually, and I cannot remember who this person was, but I actually saw um, an entertainer. I think it was a, one of the live uh, late night show hosts or something like that, acknowledging with, with due sincerity the 9-11 anniversary, and yet made an ancillary attempt at, at humor, not about the event itself, but about something else that, that came out of it. And I thought, all right, if, if we are at the point now where comedians or satirists are starting to be able to take some, take, take some liberties with the solemnity of an event like that, then we're almost psychologically past it. Almost. Not that we'll ever forget it uh, or think of it as something other than tragic, but to go to your point, Kevin, there does seem to be a little bit of lessening of the angst that, that, that is attached. We can separate ourselves a little bit from it, and I say a little bit, but it's always, that's always the thing, is it like a, a comic or a writer or somebody will say, uh, if you're in an editorial meeting, or, or you're planning a show, or you're planning a bit, or something of that nature, and you've got different topics that are topics of the day. We used to sit in editorial meetings with morning shows and things in radio, and it said, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do tomorrow? What are you gonna do next? And you'd got a list of all topical things, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, local, national, whatever, and we always ask the question, while we're thinking about stuff to do, it's always, is it too soon? And that's the question that, uh, that, that, that entertainers, comics in particular, satirists, um, will always be very careful about if they can. Is it too soon? In other words, regardless of how, how, how funny or whatever it is this is going to be, is it the right time to do this? Is it too soon?
and um, and it's still too soon, I think, for 9/11. It might always it might always be too soon, but my my sense is that we have an easier approach. And, uh, Am I making any sense there? No, it's perfect sense. Now I'm thinking that 20 years, uh, not necessarily to joke and make light of, but at least no. to um, not of the event itself. Yeah, but um, but you know, for let's say for for car car dealerships to have sales and go September 11th, come down. Oh, it, mm, I know. No, no. Um, it will never get there. And I'm interested to know, Lee, our next guest, whether or not it's too soon. He and I <laughs> were both holed up in Niagara Falls City Council last night. Uh, seven hour, 48 minute long <laughs> meeting wrapped up just before uh, midnight last night. And uh, Councilor Mike Strange joins you on the show. All right. Uh, hi, Mike. How are you? Thank you for having me, guys. I'm good. Yeah, I'd good. rather run a marathon than, than have a marathon meeting like that again. That was. Uh, did Quite you, long. <laughs> you're, you're looking fairly rested. Uh, you got some sleep. I got some sleep. Yeah, I went home and slept right away. It was good. Wow. I actually st- we we stopped at Clancy's for some chicken wings. So I would hope so. You'd be. I mean, chicken yeah. wings would definitely be the order of the day after a <laughs> seven hour meeting. I gotta tell you. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a long one. Yeah, you know, um, people have no idea the, the general rank and file have no idea really what uh, representatives do that uh, that try to look after their interests in, in, in municipal governments. God, God bless all of you. I, I, I don't think there's any reason why anybody should have to sit for seven hours in a meeting, but you guys voted to continue, so, you know. Well, we, did, we, yeah, we didn't want to come back today to do another one, so <laughs> might as well get, try to get it over with. Well, anyway, thank you for, uh, for all that you and the other councillors do for... Uh, for the city of Niagara Falls. We're here to talk about something else though. Uh, and that is uh, that is an event that you've been involved with. This is uh, what sort of the nine and a half or the almost 10th year. Well, it's, it, yeah, it would actually, so Heaters Heroes event, we started in 2011. So it actually was supposed to be our 10th year anniversary last year, but we couldn't do the event even yeah. though we did help five, uh, five children. Um, so this year, so we call that the nine and a half year. So, because we wanted to do a very special event this year, and we weren't sure if we were going to be able to do it, but we got okay from the city and the province to do it, and um, we usually do it the second weekend of August, but because of uh, restrictions in August, we were only, I think at that time, allowed to have 100 people. Now, we, you know, we have about 100 volunteers wow. that help out today. So, um, so we're, we're doing it uh, this coming Saturday, September 18th at Oaks Park. Um, in uh, Heater or Bob Lavelle's legacy, and and uh, for people who didn't know Heater, he was a just a, a just an awesome guy, and he helped me out during the Olympics for boxing. He was a friend of my my father's, and he worked for Bell Mobility years ago when for cell phones first came out, and he actually came up with a plan to give uh, Olympic athletes uh, cell phones. I think they were ten dollars a month or something like that, so we can get a hold of our family and friends and media when we were away in international tournaments. Uh, so. Um, he helped all the Olympic athletes, which which was just a great program which he started, and and uh, you know he he helped me uh, uh, get funding for myself and other athletes uh, as you know we're training for the Olympics, and you know you're trying to you know you, you can't work, you you can't go to school a lot of the times, you're just trying to train full time and and try to bring back some hardware for for, uh, for our country from big international tournaments. So he was a like a mentor of mine, and, and really, yeah. really helped me out. And um, what was his background, Mike? Uh, Bob Lavelle. He um, he was just an entrepreneur. He owned he owned Clancy's. He was the one that started off Clancy's ah. a restaurant bar, and um, he had one over the river as well. And and um, he's his uh, he was a, an agent for Dougie Gilmore for a little bit, but he was uh, communications basically with and marketing for. Uh, uh, for Bell and, and he actually started up I don't know if you remember the NHL slow pitch tournament years ago at Oaks I Park. do I do remember so, that and he started that and that's where, where you know all the charities he raised hundreds Great. of thousands okay, of dollars for, for local charities and all these NHL players came and I, I, I remember when I was a kid going there and looking up to these guys and he was just a uh, a god to me heater because he just <laughs> anything he touched kind of turned to gold and, and uh, so he came and help me out. He came to the Olympics in Sydney with me and cheer me on. And um, so, in, in, in 2008, um, his uh, his niece, which is Donnie Lever's daughter, 
was playing uh, baseball for Canada at the Olympics, and he asked me, and I was retired at that time, he was asked me if I wanted to go, and I said, yeah, I'd love to go, you know what I mean? So I waited about a month, and I never heard from him, and then we, I, I called him, and he says, oh, Mike, you know, I, I have this pain in my back, you know, it's, it's bringing me down to my knees, it, it's it's so bad, I'm like, oh, you better get checked out. And he called me, he says, no, we can't go. I can't go to the Olympics because I got diagnosed with cancer, uh-huh. I don't know what type of cancer it is yet, but in the end it was pancreatic if there's a cancer you don't want and that, that's that would it be the yeah one. and so you know he he had good connections good networking larry playfair actually got him hooked up with some great treatment and stuff but you know pancreatic you, you need a miracle and uh eight short months later he passed away and mm. i was crushed i was crushed and uh and i thought what could we do to carry on his legacy with different charities so we thought about doing this uh, event Heaters Heroes Run for Children, which started in 2011, and um, basically we would have children who have terminal illnesses or life-altering illnesses or injuries, and they would walk or get wheeled or helped in any way around the 400-meter lap in the soccer soccer pitch there at Oaks Park. And for some of them, it's like running a marathon. It really is. And, yeah. And um, I met a special little girl, Kelsey Hill, there, and uh, Matteo Mancini, and um, unreal. And, and so this is. Our official 10th year anniversary, meanwhile, it is 11 years, and we've helped over 130 children, raised over $130,000 for these children. We, and it's almost like a mini wish foundation. Right. We yeah. give them wishes, and we take them out on a, like a Niagara Falls Disney, I guess, a right. tour. We go on Hornblower, we go on different attractions, um, the parks, and the city of Niagara Falls helps out, and uh, tourism, the different shareholders in, in Tourism Niagara help out. So, so how it's do a we, great uh, event. How, how do we help? How do we participate? Give us the, the, the details of the event tomorrow so that we can uh, do whatever we can to help you. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it starts Saturday. The, the opening ceremony start at noon with uh, some of our city uh, elected officials coming out. And we, we have actually celebrities for every lap that actually walk around with that child. Oh, and great. we do. Um, nice. Yeah, and, and so Steve Ludzik is actually going to walk the last lap because, you know, he's been going such uh, an ordeal in the oh, last man. year and a half. Just got a, a liver transplant. And yeah. He's doing okay, and he, his liver is still uh, trying to, you know, get everything aligned with his body. So he's been in and out of the hospital, but he promised me he's going to walk. He actually promised he's going to run the last lap. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, that would be something. Yeah, but he's done so much for our community, and he, he is a true celebrity. You know, it's a good thing about this this event is that we bring out former Heaters heroes that we've helped in the past. Some have passed away and we do memory laps for them. So we, we do a, a lap in memory of say Kelsey Hill who passed away. That's super. And then we have former Heaters heroes as our celebrity. They're a, alumni celebrities and, and it just gives you an update of how well these kids are doing. You know, we, we had uh, one girl, Haley Patrick, who was one of our first year uh, heater's hero she had leukemia and at that time things didn't look too good for her and now over like almost 11 years later she finished top of her class in calling her now her and her family come back and they bake goods and sell them at heater's heroes and give all the funds to heater's heroes so oh, it's not great amazing. it's unbelievable and just to give people you know you've helped these kids in the past 10 11 years and now you update and they're doing amazing we have a one kid scott gamal who, who's fighting cancer and again, you know, he, he, he didn't look great at the time. And his wish, he just wanted a set of drums. So we bought him drums. Now he comes and plays in the band. We have live music that day, and he comes and plays. <laughs> yeah, you got it's bands great. all day long out there, there, right? We do. Like, during the day, you know, we have Chris Giacchino, um kind of hosts the day event. And we have um, uh, uh, Anthony DiCarlo. He has this kind of school of rock out of Chippewa, and he brings all the kids. Yeah, so the Niagara their, Rock Academy. During the yeah, exactly. And they're yeah. amazing. They come out for a few hours and they showcase their kids who have been uh, practicing. And, you know, in this last year and a half, two years, it's been such a tough time. Everyone's excited to go watch a live band. Absolutely. And our main band yeah. from 8, 8 to 10 o'clock is going to be the Mad Hatters. And they are an amazing band. And they, they play great covers. And Frankie Peter Angel, who's the the singer, he you know he fought testicular cancer when he was a kid playing for Niagara Falls Canucks. So he knows exactly what some of these kids are going through. There isn't anybody watching this program, or that I don't think is alive in our experience, that has not been touched somehow by 
that dreaded beast that is cancer. And to people like yourself and, uh, and the other volunteers that participate in events like this, kudos to everybody that, uh, that spends any time and gives of their own time, because that's, that's really the biggest commodity, I think, today is people's time. It's very, very valuable. And for you guys uh, and, it is. and it, your volunteers it, to do that, is, it's a great thing. It, it is, and I'm very fortunate to, blo to belong to the Falls View Wolves Brigade Service Club, and we have so many great volunteers, and, and all the all the volunteer groups and, and uh, nonprofits and charitable organizations, they've been hurt in the last year and a half because they couldn't, weren't, aren't, aren't able to do events. Yeah. And we were debating whether to do this event at all because of, you know, being in a kind of a fourth wave, and but these kids can't wait. You know, we have eight children we're helping this year, we have five last year, and most of them are gonna attend. Um, and uh, yeah, they can't wait. They need they need our help. So well, it looks like people. If if you see the when, uh, up on our screen, we've got the weather posted for the next few days. It looks like you're going to have an absolutely beautiful day for it, Mike, at uh, at Oaks Park. And again, um, kudos to you for being so um, so consistent and resilient with this with this event, Heaters Heroes, starting at noon at Oaks Park. And uh, what time do you, does uh, things wrap up i guess it's uh, got to be pretty later in the day right we're we're we the kids events are noon to five with the labs and then it turns in kind of to the adult event which is five till uh, 11 o'clock at night with all the bands ah great and um he, heater loved his beer you know, I, I <laughs> yeah. didn't get me wrong and so we actually end up through blackburn brewery uh down across near across the street from heartland forest who actually we help as well they have they have made a heater's heroes beer. Heater's heroes so beer. I know heater will be heater will be smiling from above <laughs> because he loved his beer and that would just make his life great there just by having a heater's heroes beer. I already have his family wanting to order cases, so uh, we're going to be doing a special announcement tomorrow about all that. All right, that's awesome. Uh, Niagara Falls City Councilor Mike Strange, uh, former Olympic uh, athlete, boxer, uh, uh, humanitarian, all, all those other things you want to throw at it. Heater's heroes event. Saturday, Oaks Park starting at noon. Mike, thanks for being here. Uh, uh, your your enthusiasm and your passion for this cause is is absolutely palpable, and uh, we thank you for the work you do. Appreciate you being here today. Well, thank you very much, Lee and Kevin. I really appreciate the invite. Okay, take care, Mike. Have fun Saturday. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Again. Um, you, you could, we should never be surprised, but every now and then the passion of Niagarans does surprise you. There are so many people with so many legitimate causes and something like this that's been going for, uh, in his mind, 11 years. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That is uh, very, very cool. Um, Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing uh, fantastic. I love all these organizations that help uh, children out. And I mean, Mike's just been doing that out of the goodness of his heart and in memory of his good buddy for now going to be the 11th year. And Heaters Heroes is incredible. And I guess uh, sticking with the theme, right? We're helping kids in need across Niagara. Absolutely. And uh, we need to touch base with the uh, Niagara Children's Center. You mentioned earlier about the Smile Campaign. Right. But we've got, uh, well, we've got Marla Smith. Marla us. Smith is joining us uh, right now from the Niagara Children's Center. Uh, hi, Marla. How are you today? Thanks for being here. Hi, Lee. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing well. Great. We've met before. We've uh, I, I've done broadcasts from your front yard before. Well, not your front sure yard, have. but yep. But the children's right center's at front children's yard. Center. So um, you also have a, a, a fundraiser and uh, and an awareness campaign going on, and I see that lovely uh, superhero. Uh, shirt there behind you tell us about what you guys have got going on here yes so niagara children's center is proud to have our seventh annual superhero run on saturday september 25th at a new location of burgoyne woods and oh. we are so excited nice what a beautiful spot yeah, yes so, we're super excited okay so tell us all about it Perfect. So the superhero run has two different ways that you can participate. One, if you're interested in doing like a distance run, two and a half K, five K, you can register and do a traditional run, raise money for the center and support the good work that we're doing. Okay. The second way is um, we do a one K run. 
and the 1K run is really geared towards children and families. And we set it up in such a way that along a 1K track, we have 10 different activity stations that are all superhero themed. So one of those activity stations will be a Spider-Man station. And children will use the small muscle movements in their finger and be able to spray silly string out of their can of silly string <laughs> and get the villains just like you were, you know, pretending to be Spider-Man shooting your web. Awesome. And all of our activity stations are geared like this. That's great. That is just super. And uh, Marlo, what uh, what do we do to get it? We, we can obviously still register for this because you said it's the 25th. So that's a couple of weeks away now, right? Uh, Absolutely. So, so how, do, how, do, how do we do it? How can we help you raise the most money possible? What do we do? Okay, well, that's a great question. I love when somebody says that. <laughs> so the first thing you can do is you can go online to www.niagara superhero run dot ca you can go online you can register you can donate you can support us and if you're not able to attend and you're not really in a position to be able to donate we understand that share it invite your friends tell your friends maybe somebody else will be interested or able to support uh the good work that's taking place here let's let's talk about that for a second now I am perhaps more familiar with the Niagara Children's Center than others because we have chatted numerous times uh, through through the media of, of Niagara. So, uh, and I've taken a tour of your facility numerous times, and I'm always amazed by by what you people do. Um, what are your biggest challenges right now? Because I know they change. I know, I know you have a lot of therapists on a lot of different levels. You have families that are trying to get in. There are waiting lists and, and so, so many different things. And then people will say, well, this is a big organization. Why are, why are we donating? What are, what's our money going to do? What is, so what is our money going to do that we're donating to this, to this cause? Perfect. So Lee, for, for your viewers that aren't familiar with Niagara Children's Center, Niagara Children's Center serves children and youth across the Niagara region who need communicative, physical, or developmental therapy services. So um, we provide those right here in at our main location in St. Catharines. What you also, your audience might be surprised to know, we serve 5,800 children from across our Niagara region as well. So that is an enormous amount of children. So during the time of COVID, one of the things that's really complicated for us is, you know, we're used to delivering care uh, the way most people are, which is face to face in that type of environment. And so we've had to transition over these last 18 months from delivering care face to face to finding a virtual component to be able to do that without sacrificing the quality of care that we're offering. Right. Um, and we have been able to do that. Now, um, there are families that still need to be coming in and we are working with those families to provide a safe environment for them to be able to come in um, with appropriate PPE, cleaning processes and all of that. Um, but we also are finding there's some amazing things happening when families don't have to travel um, if you live in Fort Erie and you have to travel to Niagara Children's Center's main location in St. Catharines, that can take a while. If mom or dad has to take off time for work to be able to come in, again, that's another spot um, that takes more time out of the right. day. Yeah. So this virtual has saved that. Yeah. So, Marla, the the waiting list issue. How is that? How is that doing? And I I know that um, I've talked with numerous families and to be not to put too fine a point on it sometimes there's some frustration with with, with people that uh, families that have children in, in need and they um, how, how are we making out there does the, do these fund I'm asking you a bunch of questions at once here I'm sorry mm -hmm. um, but do, do these do these fundraisers does this extra money help you uh, speed up that waiting list by hiring other therapists or how, how is this working? So Lee, I'll answer that question in a few ways. Okay. First, um, I will share with you that kids can't wait. Kids need therapy now so that they can be able to be the best they can be and that they're not falling farther behind. So at Niagara Children's Center, we recognize that. Two, 
Uh, because of COVID, it is um, it has put us farther behind in our wait list. You know, we're making progress, um, but you will be happy to know that last year, our board of directors approved to use additional funds to hire more staff to help take that wait list down. Terrific. Uh, because, yeah, uh, and that was 100% result of the fundraising efforts that have um, our community has done for us. I know that um, the people that work at the Children's Center are specialists and they're well trained at what they do. Is there, uh, and th this question just occurred to me, so I don't mean to take you by surprise, is there a volunteer capacity as well? If somebody says, I'd really like to give some time uh, to the Niagara Children's Center because I have time and I like kids and I'd like to help out, is that, is that an option for people? So you're absolutely right. The therapists that we have working at our center are specialists in their own fields yes. um, and in pediatric, uh, in pediatric rehabilitation. And typically, yes, we have volunteers at the center helping with any of the group programs that we run Good, okay. or um, uh, uh, fundraising events, things like that. COVID has changed some of that right now for us. Sure. So those processes aren't really flushed out at this point in time. But yes, in a, in a typical world, yes, volunteers assist our therapists in order to make um, the experience uh, better for everyone. All right, so one more time. Let's run through the basics of the superhero run. Um, and I'll shut up and just let you give us the nuts and bolts before we say goodbye. Perfect. So the superhero run is the seventh one that we are doing. We are looking to raise $75,000 for children right here in Niagara. You can help um, by registering or going online to make a donation to www.niagarasuperherorun.ca. And the event is on Saturday, September 25th at Burgoyne Woods. Um, and we would love to have you a part of what we're doing. Marla Smith of Niagara Children's Center serving all of Niagara so, so well almost 6,000 children um, around around Niagara. It's fascinating. Uh, thank you and all of your people for, for the work that you do. Plus, pass on our, our appreciation, please. Thanks for being here, Marla. And um, go crazy on the 25th. Have fun. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye now. Special people there, Kevin. Very, very, very special people. Yeah, Lee, and I was able to see some stuff here online that I just wanted to share uh, share with you. There's their their goal, 57,000 so far, of their goal of 75,000. Yeah. So still have a week and a half before the superhero run, so I imagine that's going to continue to climb north. Sure. And then yeah. as we look at uh, some of the top donors, so a lot of uh, local corporations that you'll see in there. Yeah. See top teams, Penn Financial Credit Union. And look at our Team Super Jake up there. Yeah, the Team spot. Super Jacob. And That's you will notice awesome. when it comes to top yeah. fundraisers, Jacob Hermans. Did we saw, we saw the Heroes guys there too, did we not? Scroll back down there. Harper. Oh, that's Harper's Heroes. There's a lot oh, of yeah, heroes Harper's around. Heroes. Yeah, Harper's yeah. Heroes. Yeah, yeah Harper's. Yeah, 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 and there's a, our, our buddy Super Jacob. Yeah. That's a uh, number one fundraiser. So many so many spokes in this wheel um, that, that help children and their families. And... Kevin, I know that you must have thought about it, especially when uh, you and your wife were planning to have have a family. I know my wife and I did many years ago. Same feelings, same whatever. What if, what what if the what if the unthinkable happens and you do have a child with special needs uh, on some level or another? The first thing that first thing that you have to deal with is wrapping your head around things as a, as a parent and as a family that, okay, our life has changed now. We knew our life would change by having a child anyway, but now this changes things on a much different scale. And uh, to, uh, for parents and families to, to, to wrap their heads around that kind of situation must be, must be a challenge. And these people at uh, places like the Niagara Children's Center do such a wonderful job of working with families to help minimize that, uh, that stress and that anxiety. They really do. It did. It alleviated it, it for us. Um, having worked with the Children's Center and some of their fundraising efforts in the past, 
I knew intimately what it was that they did and the services they provided, yep. and it was comforting to know that we could get that level of service right here in St. Catharines, and we wouldn't have to go to Hamilton. Yeah. As a, as a lot of families do for various other right. treatments. So to know that it's here, I always to call it the um, the insurance policy. I mean, you talk it to is. any you talk to any family, and you open up. Everybody in Niagara is probably one or two degrees of separation away mm-hmm. from Niagara Children's Center. And just so you know, Lee, I mean, uh, our daughter went in there just for speech assessment early on when she was probably two, three years old. Yeah. So even though we were we were in and out, and it was an assessment, we received care. From the Niagara Children's Center, and I, I, and I, so many families have across Niagara in, in various capacities. My, my grandson, in the interest of full disclosure, my, my grandson um, has been a little, I mean, he's a bright kid and all that, but he's been a little slow to articulate with with speech, and that's something that uh, the Niagara Children's Center deals with on a, on a huge degree. Now, my grandson is in British Columbia, he's not here, but, um, but he uses, uh, they take advantage of a facility that is similar in the area where they where they live and um, even if it's just once a week for a couple of months or something like that till till somebody gets on to on a track or in the right spot you know it's it's so so important and it's it's so important to the parents because the anxiety is like just off the charts is. you know anyway um, uh, thank you for uh, all that you do so there are a couple of cool events the 25th uh, at uh, um, Burgoyne Woods. Burgoyne Woods, and of course o- Oaks Park, uh, day after uh, day after day after tomorrow. <laughs> now, uh, Lee, just want to share something with you here that's uh, happening right now on Niagara Four One One, and this is uh, out near where I live, Seventh uh, Street and the QEW. It looks like there's a, a a truck that is completely engulfed, and this is in the Toronto bound lanes. Okay, N- not a result of an accident, or no, just... it's here's what we have from Nick, and you can read that. QEW Toronto bound, 7th Street, St. Kitts uh, Motor Vehicle Fire, St. Catharines Fire and Lincoln Fire Departments on the way. Fully involved truck fire. wonder what's in the truck. It says it's a crane truck there, so... Oh, so it's, it's not a container truck. Okay. Hard to say. Is it, my, is it my imagination? Maybe it's the fact that Nick is just doing a fine, fine job of reporting all of these things, but is it my imagination, or do we have a lot of burning vehicles? Oh, here you go, right here. Over the past while. I've seen similar trucks to this around, but I... Yeah, well, how do they catch? Don't exactly know what, they're, what they do. Is it a tree trimming service? It's a bucket truck there. Well, at the back, it looks like, some, it looks like, a, like a generator or something, right? Like an air... That'd be my guess, yeah. Generator or something. And yeah, good point by Frida. Hope the driver... <laughs> uh, yeah, for, because it looks like the fire's in the front, near the front of the vehicle, at least from this angle. It's got to be... It had to have started in the engine somewhere. I mean, there's a good indication, at least the, the car's pulled over to the shoulder, so there's obviously some time. We were trying to um, run down someone to speak with today as well, speaking of... Uh, vehicle fires that played the role of uh, Good Samaritan. This is one of the things, by the way, that Nick uh, and uh, you contributors to Niagara 411 do so well is acknowledging people that otherwise might fade off into the never, never woodwork and, and not be acknowledged. And there was, I know we've got a picture of it somewhere. Yeah, I'll just leave this photo up. I'm scrolling down to it. Later. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, there was uh, another incident of a vehicle fire, and the picture did come up on Niagara 411 because the woman that was involved with this vehicle wanted to thank a good Samaritan for helping her in this very stressful situation. And I don't think that we've actually uncovered the identity of this person or this person has not yet come forward uh, I, think they, they? I think they did oh, yeah did through, they? through the power of social media and a big part to Niagara 411 oh, we did get uh, it. they did find the the individual and I tried to connect with him also uh, got pretty close uh, I spoke to the, okay. the woman's daughter that oh. was in the vehicle oh, right. But, all right uh, okay I misspoke I thought we were still trying to track this uh, this person down but again these are the things that there's another uh, that make you feel better. There are enough things out there in the news that make you feel crappy uh, and uh, are kind of depressing, like the 
the graffiti on the on the mayor's house and the desecrating of somebody's vehicle or something like that those those things kind of make you feel depressed and then there are things that make you feel good to kind of balance it out and that is some serious burnt vehicle my god uh, Can you imagine that being your car? It's like an ap- apocalyptic movie. Yeah, it's Mad Max to the power of ten. Like, how do you, how the hell do you get out of that? So here was the note. I'm not sure. Can you read that, Lee? Yeah, I'm looking for a gentleman from Welland named Riz or Riz, who was driving on the Toronto-bound QEW this afternoon, approximately 2 p.m., and stopped to rescue my mother and her boxer from a disastrous car fire. They are both okay. We want to thank him personally for being there. I'm not, not exactly sure what role he played. Like, did he pull her from a burning car? Did he just offer her comfort? Did he drive her somewhere? Don't lend her a cell phone? Well, it says rescue. So I'm assuming the vehicle must have been in distress when this... And they were. it must have been that they were in the car when this happened. I don't know. So, uh, you know what, if, uh, if we do touch base with them, we'll get them on next week because I have all those same questions and everybody else that saw the post similar. I want to know how these things start. I want to know what the investigation is as to how these, these vehicle fires start. We never hear that. We see this all the time on, on Niagara 411 and, and in other places, but mainly in Niagara 411 is where this stuff first comes to mind. How does that start? I don't... How do you get there? How do you get from driving on the QEW to to this? this? Yeah, we said it at the same time. To this. How does that happen? We never hear about that, though. Can you say insurance claim, boys and girls? Like, you can't even tell the make of the car. I mean, it could be any make, because all car companies have cars that kind of have that sort of shape. You know what? It was was debated in the comments, and people said that it was, a, I believe, a Subaru Forester. Okay. Like it was. It was in the comments of Niagara 411. People wondering about the make or model. But no, it's, it's but it not. Could, but it could be that. It could be a number of different vehicles Absolutely. that have that code. I mean, all, so, all car companies have midsize or small SUVs or, or whatever that look like this. Mm-hmm. I, I would never presume to, to guess what the make and model of that vehicle is. But nevertheless, is it, is it a mechanical thing? Was it something... Um, that was going on inside the car? Is it a, is, is, like, how does it start? There has to be an investigation. There's, there's always an investigation of a house burns down. There has to be an investigation if a car burns up. Yeah, and right Wouldn't now, it, I guess, you know, I don't know what the situation is on the QEW right now. Who investigates that? that? Is it the Ontario truck? Fire Marshal? I don't know. Uh, I'd, like to, to, I, I'd like to talk to somebody about that sometime, Kevin. Also, another Good Samaritan story coming out of Merrittville Speedway. Yeah, this is a nice one. To the gentleman who gave us free ticket while we were waiting in line at Maryville Speedway last night, I just wanted to thank you, well, the past Saturday, I just wanted to thank you again. Like I said, I've had a really rough week and your random act of kindness made my night. I even woke up this morning with a smile on my face. I'll be paying it forward. I appreciate you more than you know. If anyone knows this gentleman and sees this, Please let him know once again how grateful I am that something so small made such a big impact and it won't be forgotten. Thank you so, so much. Wow, okay. Kind of takes, kind of takes the negative edge off other things you talk about when you see somebody with such a heartfelt uh, thank you as that. Because you know it's sincere. I mean, you can, you can feel the, the sincerity dripping through that message and who knows what kind of week that 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 person had i wonder how that i wonder how that happened like i'd like to know how these things happen you're standing in line obviously you're going to buy tickets and then how does somebody come to give you ticket i want to know the story myself yeah i'm interested to know that one yeah. Um, let's see if there's an update. And we got a uh, musical guest coming up, Lee. Who's our musical guest this week? Ah, you're testing me now, you see. Our musical guest. Well, is... I want to get an update on the, uh, the, the, the bucket truck on fire on the QEW and see if there's anything there. Our musical guest uh, is Jay Legere. 
And uh, Kevin, I'll bet you thought I wasn't taking notes and paying attention, but I was. No, never noted you, Lee. <laughs> Jay Legere, originally a St. Catharines uh, resident and uh, citizen, currently living in Toronto, but has been uh, thinking about um, making a, a, re a return to St. Catharines. But as it is right now, uh, Jay is still living in Toronto. He has a new release out. He's an urban artist, a hip-hop artist, by the way. Uh, and uh, there is a new release just... Now, when the cool kids talk about new music coming out, we used to, in the old days, uh, talk about music being released or records being released. Now, they are dropped. <laughs> so, um, a new single just dropped for Jay Legere. Uh, St. Catharines native. Uh, it's called Pain. And every single week here on Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry, we play us uh, off the stage with uh, an artist that is connected to Niagara. And that's what we're going to be playing ourselves off the set with today is Jay Legere's Pain, a hip hop artist. And uh, we're looking forward to it. So, look at, did you find out any more there, Kim? Uh, just looking to see the comments. I mean, you know, Kim's, I think that's what we're all thinking, right? Hey, boss, we have a bit of a situation with the truck. Oh, I love satire and subtle uh, humor. Although there's nothing really funny about that uh, if you're involved in it. I'm just glad that, you know, everybody's safe from the looks of it. Yeah, nobody hurt, which I guess gives, it makes it open season on whatever comment that you do want to make. But again, I, I, we never hear how these things start, and I'm always so, so... Curious, because there, but for the grace of whoever, uh, go us. We could be driving in our vehicles anywhere, anytime, and all of a sudden you smell something funny, and then you stop. As long as you're driving, maybe you're okay, because the wind is sort of protecting you. But you stop, and the flames take over. Yeah. Speaking of uh, smelling something funny, seems that uh, marijuana has been legalized. Uh, in yeah. You, one, one, one would think that uh, it's uh, <laughs> April twentieth. <20th. laughs> Sitting here in the window. I just got a, uh, I think it was a, a I did. waft. I think a skunk walked by. I got a waft. A skunk That's walked something. by. Very. And hey, there's St. Paul Street right now. <laughs> so maybe you can see the plume of smoke. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I want to thank a lot of folks. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jazz. Jasmine Jessa the Vicious. Jazz the Vicious. <laughs> For getting her very, very first and a highly coveted UFC contract from Dana White after her fight last night. So uh, a Niagaran has achieved at least one big step toward their ultimate dream and she was just so uh, jazzed to, to get there. Uh, also Jessica Wilson, um, long time, she is, for, for a very um, youthful lady, she has been at this entertainment gig for a long time since she was pretty darn young and uh, she's been working for an agency uh, taking pictures and doing reporting on TIFF this week and I want to thank her for coming on the program. Great work uh, Jessica, we'll talk again uh, on that. Mike Strange, uh, Niagara Falls City Councilor and uh, the force behind Heaters Heroes, the event coming up on Saturday you can check it out uh, online or go back and uh, watch the interview on uh, Niagara 411 Live. We have all the information there for you. And of course, as always, Marla Smith and all the people at Niagara Children's Center, thank you for everything you do. And their event is coming up on uh, September the 25th. We're going to uh, segue out to Jay Legere. And uh, Lee, before you do that and, okay. and say your, bid your adieu, I, I should warn people there is a little bit of not safe for work language in the song. So, you know. It is the hip hop genre, so uh, you know there are there are lyrics that might not be acceptable to all folks, but these are the days of our lives. <laughs> uh, Kevin Jack, as always, we stream does a, a fabulous job of executively producing this program, and the technology is second to none. So, Kevin, as always, it's a pleasure. We want to thank Gail's Gas Bars, uh, our title sponsor and our supporters, Performance Heating and Air, Ennewick, High Speed Internet, and Verge Insurance Group. My name is Lee Sterry. Episode 38 comes your way next Thursday 
at noon here from Fiddler's Poor House. And again, we thank uh, Mook and his staff for hosting us every single week here on St. Paul Street. Everybody have yourselves a great rest of the week and a wonderful weekend. Looks like the weatherman's going to be cooperating, so enjoy some of the last gasps of uh, summer weather. And uh, Jay Legere is coming up. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Cheers. Wasn't with me through the 